was a very uh, highly active kid, if you can, ima if you can imagine that. Um, I was in everything. I was in gymnastics, football, basketball, baseball, um, uh, pottery. I mean, my, my mom put me in every single thing because I had so much energy. And I don't know if today, back in the day, I would have been labeled probably with every single uh, label you could possibly have. I, mean, I just had a ton of energy. So my mom put me in a lot of deals and a lot of sports and a lot of different activities. Um, but as I continued to grow and I continued to go through, you know, my childhood, my dad always put me in divisions that were higher than me. If I was seven, I always played with the nine-year-olds. And I never knew that. And he always did that, so I'd always be at a disadvantage and had to work and, um, and outwork everybody. But I was doing it with your guys that were two, three years older than I was. And um, I don't know if you ever lied about my age or things like that to get me in, but um, sports has always been my interest and I actually thought I was going to play baseball or basketball to be honest with you uh, I was a three-sport all-state athlete in high school I, I didn't know what I was going to do and then I said no matter what happens I'm gonna take the first thing that comes to me and that was a football scholarship so I was 5'8 150 pounds ran a 4'8 40 not very big not very fast but I could catch everything and then uh, Joe Novak at Northern Illinois offered me a scholarship and I took off there and then um, had an okay career there and played with the Niners for a few years and here I am you know, I would say probably as a player my senior year in college, um, that was such an awesome run, not only for Northern Illinois, but um, the MAC in general. I think right after that happened, we beat Alabama, we beat Maryland, we beat Iowa State. Um, we were ranked high, high as eighth or nine in the BCS, and we, went, we didn't go to a bowl game. We, we did not go to the MAC championship or, win or go to a bowl game. So, and there was only one bowl game at the time or two bowl games, and whoever was at the championship got into that. And I think we opened the door that year for a Boise State, for people to talk about a non-BCS school actually doing something in the BCS. And that was really memorable because I think that year helped change college football. I really believe that. And I think you talk to a lot of people that cover college football, they'll remember that year. I can't remember how many NFL people still remember our win against Alabama. NFL people. Because um, it really, I think, sprung a change for the Mid-American Conference that we have to add more bowl games. And our commissioner has done a tremendous job of doing that. Um, but also it, give, it gave people, hey, we need to kind of, we need to add some, some, you know, verbiage into what we're going to do because one day this is going to happen. They could have went 12-0. and What are we going to do? And um, so that's really a, a memorable year. Well, someone has to be the youngest and someone has to be the oldest, right? So might as well be me. Um, I don't look at it that way. I look at it, I'm, I'm, I'm a 58-year-old trapped in a 32-year-old body. I have a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, I, I've coached or played for 15 head coaches, and that's incredible. And you, both at the NFL level and at the college level, you look at my resume. I, I, I played in the conference, in the Mid-American Conference. I, I coached in the Mid-American Conference. Uh, I was an academic All-American in this conference. I coached in the NFL. I played in the NFL. I'll put that part against any head coach in the country because no one else has had that type of resume. And uh, I'm very proud of it uh, because of the people that I've come in contact with. And uh, I've been seven places in eight years. I understand that. But I've been able to take all that information and then go to the next guy and con con completely you know, continue to build my head coaching book and what I wanted to become as a head football coach and when I get a chance to lead men. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not managing people. I'm leading men. So it's, a, it's been a blast so far. Well, I think anything is every time you go through something, it's the first time. Right? So whether it was the recruiting of, uh, official visits the first time, that was new. Um, as the head football coach, how you truly want to do everything. So it's kind of a broad answer, but uh, everything that I do this first year is all new. And it's all learning experience. And then the next year we'll make it better, and then we'll make it better after that year. And, but as long as you're willing to continue to learn as a head football coach, uh, I think you got a chance. And um, even coming here, sitting down with Pete Lembo and uh, he's one of the classiest guys in college football. I love that guy. And, and Frank Solich, I mean, uh, I remember him when I was a kid uh, coaching at Nebraska. And it was like I was in Chicago, but he was, he was looked at as a god in Nebraska at times. I mean, it, it's, just, it, it's just an honor to be in this conference as a head football coach. And like I said, we're going to continue to learn on a daily basis and, and try to make, uh, make everything better. And I believe in taking what's not broken, breaking it, and trying to put it back together. And sometimes you put it back together exactly how you just built it. It was worth it. Or you change it completely. Well, I think it's, you know, I, I've learned that um, going into it that it's the eighth greatest rivalry in all of college football, which is tremendous. I mean, it's a hundred and some years. I mean, that, the Cannon Trophy and um, 
there's so much tradition behind it. And what I want to do is amplify that tradition. I want to be able to make sure our players understand that they have a tradition within the conference. You know, everybody talks about the Ohio State, Michigan, or Florida, Florida State, and you have all these traditions, but what about the Mac? And yeah, you have your miniature ones, but that is one of the greatest of all time. And um, I want our players to understand that. They can also not only play in rivalries back and forth between whether it's Western and Toledo or Western and Northern or whatever it is, but they have the eighth greatest rivalry in all of college football right here. And you have that type of game that Michigan and Michigan State or Michigan State or Michigan and Ohio State get to play in. You have that. You can have that experience here at Western Michigan. And um, you know, Coach Enos has done a tremendous job at Central Michigan creating stability in that program that has lost some head coaches and had a lot of change in the last few years. So um, I'm honored to be a part of it. Maction, um, an elite, up tempo style of play. I just think I, they've mentioned it more to me instead of us selling that to them. Um, but I do like the word, and I do like our conference getting the notoriety that I think it deserves. Uh, I think when you look at when I mean that, the elite style, that's on offense and defense. I, I love how hungry these players are. Um, at one point or another, these, co these players at some point were told they were too small, too short, too slow. At one point, 95% of the players that play in this league were told, from a BCS conference, no thank you. And I love the fight that this conference has. And you always watch guys just play their hearts out. And uh, that's what we're instilling, and that's what we have at Western Michigan. We're going to continue to recruit to. But, um, you know, it's an honor to be a part of it. That's it. Row the boat.